All right, guys, my name is Little Chef, and welcome back to another episode of the Patreon Madden Sim Owner Franchise. We're on week 17, almost to the playoffs. Don't know if I'm going to make it or not, but we're going to find out. Let's see how we did last week. The Colts end up dominating the Patriots. I mean, it was 27 to nothing at the half, and then it's kind of messing around after that. 388 yards of total offense, 211 on the ground, 177 through the air, 19 first downs. No turnovers, eight third down conversions, two fourth down conversions, and 100% in the red zone. Colts are in, in perfect playoff form, and he ended the season on a very good stretch, winning a lot in a row. <laughs> That's for dang sure. So, yeah, we know for a fact he's got the playoffs secure, and probably first round by again this year. And he's looking to, to coast into the playoffs pretty pretty handily. And we ended up losing to the Rams 24-17, to allowing 17 points in the second half alone. That's all we scored in the entire game. We had 14 right off the bat, boom, and then nothing until the end of the game. You know, we, we took a loss, man, a hard loss. Probably knocked us out of any potential opportunity for the playoff spot. But we will see 356 yards total offense, 95 on the ground, 261 through the air, 19 first downs. Only one turnover, just couldn't able to, wasn't, wasn't able to do anything with the 455 total yards we had. Uh, 10 third down conversions, we played well. We were 100% in the red zone. <laughs> we stopped them one time, just not enough to get the job done, man. I don't know what happened other than putting points up on the board. The 49ers, unable to complete the sweep of the Cardinals, end up losing 22-14. to They held them to a couple of field goals, man. That's for dang sure. Was that four, three, four? Wait, one, two, three, four, five field goals? If that's right, holy crap. Defense stepped up when they needed to, but offense unable to show up. 281 yards of total offense, 60 on the ground, 221 through the air, 10 first downs compared to their 18. 349 yards of total total yards. Compared to their fast 26, two turnovers. I mean, that's not that's not super bad, but could have been the deciding factor in this game. And and only <laughs> and only four third down conversions, and not scoring any in the red zone, not getting to the red zone, and not scoring. Whereas defense, they allowed a lot of yards, but only letting them score three times. I don't even know what that percentage is, man. Like three out of seven or something like that. Three out of eight, 42 <laughs> percent. Defense showed up. Offense helped them zero again. So for our last game of the season, unless we make the playoffs, we have the Bears, Colts, and Titans, 49ers versus Seahawks. We end up losing to Chicago 21-10, unable to stop in the second half. That's two weeks in a row. Just no help, no heart, no finish for this team this year. And it shows. I mean, we're, we're pretty mediocre at best. I think we finished 8-8. Eight and eight. We'll check that here in just a second. 220 yards of offense. That's it. 84 on the ground, 136 through the air, 9 first downs. And only a total of 327 yards. Three turnovers, horrible play on offense, plus only three third down conversions, 0% in the red zone. We just had a horrible game to end the season, and that's not how we wanted to start next year. I mean, we wanted to keep that momentum going, at least make it, have a potential to make a playoff spot, and we didn't show up at all today. The Seahawks once again dominated the 49ers 38-3. to game was over really early. As the 49ers are unable to do anything on offense, 176 yards of total offense, 63 on the ground, 113 through the air, only nine first downs for a total of 257 yards. I mean, they almost had that through the air alone. They more than double the first downs, almost more than double the yards. It's just like, come on, man. Only two third down conversions compared to their 11, 0% in the red zone again. Was that back to back weeks? Just no, no. <laughs> I don't even know what to say for the 49er team, man. They're just. They're bad. And then the Colts and Titans end up tying 20-20 to 20 to end the regular season. Colts with 514 yards of total offense, 169 on the ground, 345 through the air, 25 first downs for a total of 624 yards. I mean, two turnovers, but still kept up with them. Eight third down conversions, three fourth down conversions went for it a lot and got it. Only 50% in the red zone, though. They missed opportunities. The other two chances they were there, but the defense held them whenever they needed to and at least got out of this game unscathed with a loss, just tie. So going through all the divisions, the AFC North Steelers take it secure playoff spot going 13-3. and The AFC South Colts secured as well going 12-3-1. and The head uh, doesn't show their streak. I probably should have looked at that before, but man, they were on a nice little roll. Jaguars also secure it. Patriots secure it, and then the Jets make the wild card. Then the Broncos at 8-8. Eight and eight. Wow. Not a very good conference. And the NFC North Packers secure it. And the Lions get the wild card. We couldn't pull off the last two weeks. We probably would have finished 10-8, and eight, but we finished an even. We lost three in a row to end the season, dude. We had a good opportunity 
to push for it and maybe even make it. The Falcons also go eight and eight. <laughs> a lot of teams went eight and eight, dude. Just average teams at best, but they secure their division. And it's the East. This the Eagles go nine and seven. The Cowboys go eight and eight. It's like a, a four way tie. And then the NFC West: Seahawks go ten and six, and the Rams go nine and six. If we had won one more game, we had a very good shot for having three teams from our division make the playoffs. But no, we couldn't do it. And then the 49ers end up finishing 3-13 and on the season, losing their last three games in a row. So looking at your postseason wildcard matchups, Jaguars at the Patriots, Rams at Eagles, Jets at the Broncos, and the Lions at the Falcons. And that means myself and Epic are done for the season. We just get to watch to see how far the Colts go this year. I mean, if it's anything like it's been last year, he's got a great regular season, and then first game in the playoffs, freaking gone. But I think the team that did beat him ended up taking the cake. The next part, we'll, we'll check out how he does, as well as some of the end-of-season stuff, like MVP, all the award winners, and stuff like that. But, yeah, we got to figure out how the Colts did in their playoffs. So we'll be – actually, I need to re-sign some staff. Who wants to be re-signed? Uh, I have no money, so it doesn't really matter who I try to re-sign. I got put – I put myself in a big hurt, dude. It expires 2018. I think my head coach, actually, kind of going to be gone. But I'm very – very confident in letting him go. You know what I mean? He's he hasn't been super productive for us, so we might we might test it if we're still a coach. I mean, if we're still an owner, <laughs> we might test it and see what's going on in the off season. So we might let him go, but we're gonna advance it, and we'll show you the rest of the playoffs. All right. So looking at the games, Jaguars beat the Patriots, Rams beat the Eagles, Jets destroy the Broncos, golly, and then Lions edge out the Falcons. So this week for the divisional playoffs. We have the Jaguars, Steelers, Colts at Packers, Jets at the Colts, Rams at the Packers. I think I said Colts. Rams at the Packers, Jets at the Colts, and the Lions, Seahawks. So we're anxious to see how he's going to do. Everybody's ready. So we're going to advance it real quick and be right back with the results. And the Colts win their first playoff game. I think it's the first one in three seasons that somebody's won. So very, very excited for that. 29-7. I think it's the first home team to win in this playoffs. At 435 yards of total offense, 210 on the ground, 225 through the air, 24 first downs for almost 500 total yards. No turnovers, played pretty clean, nine third down conversions, and even only going 60% in the red zone, settling for two field goals. Still won pretty handily by three touchdowns, so it looked like it wasn't even much of a game. Colts continue to roll. Let's see who they play this next week. So looking at the matchups last week, the Jaguars beat Pittsburgh 37-10. to The Rams beat Green Bay 40-37. to the Jets beat the Colts 29, or the Colts beat the Jets 29 to 7, and then Seahawks beat the Lions. Let's see Detroit. The Colts beat the Jets 29 to 7. They go. I'm like saying the wrong team everywhere. And Seahawks win 50 to 46 over the Lions. So this week, we have the Jaguars and Colts. The Jaguars have been putting up some good numbers. So looking forward to seeing what the Colts defense can do against them. And then the Rams and Seahawks. And taking a look at the matchup, Colts win scoring 21. In the second half to knock off the Jaguars, who were on a, on our little roll there, going into the playoffs. Ended up winning 35-21. to 21. Colts had 469 yards of total offense, 211 on the ground, 258 of the year, 12 first downs with 560 total yards. No turnovers, and that could have been the deciding factor. I mean, it was a two-score game, but fourth quarter definitely came into play. Seven third down conversions going 3-4 in the red zone with three touchdowns. That for sure helped as the defense held them to two field goals as the Colts win and they're on their way to the Super Bowl and it looks like he's facing the Seahawks who end up beating the Rams 41 to 14. Taking a look at the Pro Bowl it looks like the quarterback for the Colts Andrew Luck makes it a second team and I don't think either of our our running backs Le'Veon Bell, Tavon Austin, the Colts moved him to running back and the dude's done amazing work over there that's for dang sure. It's a huge adjustment and it's definitely paid off wide receiver wise. I don't see anybody that I have. T.Y. Hilton for the Colts. He's up there. And that looks like about it. Uh, maybe Tom Montgomery as well. I'm pretty sure he got him from the, the Packers. But like I said before, and I'll say it again, I wish it showed the, uh, the, the, the teams on here other than tight end. Like, give us a team name. Give us an idea on who's who. Because I don't recognize any of these guys. <laughs> Especially if they're not my team. That's for dang sure. If they're not my team, I don't recognize you at all. That's just the way it goes, man. I don't think we'll have anybody up for an award or the Pro Bowl. I don't think I think all of our line was hurt too much. We just didn't play very well at all. But the Colts, a very good team. J.J. Watt, I think he is with the Saints. 
I think he, he got treated to the Saints before he got fired. Buck Little Mac for sure with the Colts over there. And then we have, I think that might be it. Uh, me Bane, he might be my team. I'm not 100% on that, but it's kind of iffy. Von Miller, a lot of the same old, same old guys, man. A lot of real good guys. But looks like we have nobody, which wouldn't be a surprise to me at all. Because we just didn't have a great a great team, man. Even my safety, who I traded for, is still not not up there making making his worthness. That's for dang sure. <laughs> I put a lot of I put a lot of stock in him, and he's not doing anything for me. But there's the the Pro Bowl. For those that are curious, like I said, I, the Colts had for sure a lot of people. I think myself and the 49ers maybe had one each, if that. And the Colts win the Super Bowl 35-21 with a solid 28-point second quarter. To seal the deal and put the game out of reach. 433 yards of total offense. 201 on the ground. 232 through the air. 18 first downs with 554 total yards. Even with two turnovers, still got the job done. And missing out one time in the red zone. Or this game would have been double what they had scored at 42-21. to 21. But 4 for 5, that's pretty solid. Defense only allowed them in there three times and they took advantage of it. But Colts coming out with the win. And Super Bowl champs. So taking a peek at the award winners, MVP goes to Aaron Rodgers. I mean, Austin got close with third place. That's not bad for a wide receiver converted to running back. Andrew Luck also up there. And that looks like all of the actual user players up for the MVP. Coach of the year goes to McCarthy for the Packers. No real surprise there. Two teams in my division. Of course, I'm surprised the Coles didn't make it. But they had a really good year. And then once again, myself and Epic not up for any awards. AFC. Austin gets second place. I was going to look at it real quick. Flowers. Trey Flowers gets defensive player of the year. Colts, <laughs> once again, really close. Offensive rookie of the year. Or for the Jaguars. Colts also had a re- that, that's, that's the receiver, right? Pretty sure that's the receiver. Defensive rookie of the year. Raiders win it. Colts also. I mean, Colts got rookies. They got studs everywhere. There's no doubt about it. Best quarterback, Andrew Luck. There you go. He won his award. And then Austin got second place, the best running back to Le'Veon Bell. I mean, that's probably pretty good. <laughs> best receiver, T.Y. Hilton and Ty Montgomery, both up there. Best offensive line, Steelers, Colts had their fair share of dudes up there. Four of their guys in the top seven. That's pretty solid. Best defensive line, Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack doing work. Best linebacker, Patriots. Patriots won a lot of awards, man, for them not doing much. I think they did make the playoffs, but they didn't do great there. But still up for the award regardless. Colts have some people there as well. Kicker, offensive player of the year. All right, NFC, Aaron Rodgers takes it. He's probably about to retire, I would assume. Him and Matt Ryan more than likely so far. Myself and Epic not anywhere <laughs> close to uh, to having anybody up for an award. J.J. Watt, who used to be with Epic, no longer. I think McDonald was my guy, but I traded him away. There you go, my quarterback, my 8-8 eight eight rookie. I, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm, I think that's fairly decent. And there you go. Wide receiver, I'm pretty sure, and Dockett. Not sure where he played. He might have been a wide receiver as well, but two two guys for the 49ers. Defensive rookie of the year. Dang! You got a, you got a guy up there for an award. There you go. And then Torrance, he had two rookies on defense up for an award. We had Vickers, which 68 overall. I'm surprised he's even on that list, but hey, I'll take him. Best quarterback. Best running back, not not us. <laughs> Best wide receiver, still not us, man. They they're just still a good team. There's no way around that. Offensive line, a Frederick before he got hurt, will more than likely trade him away because he's been hurt the last couple of years. Wait, it's like that's not the guy I trade. Okay, <laughs> that's not the guy I traded, is it? No, nope. the Rams. Um, I know they already had McDonald or Donald. I traded somebody else to them. I'm pretty sure. Best linebacker, Mark Barron. That guy seems familiar. Maybe maybe he was my guy. I don't know. I forget now. Vontae Davis. There we go. William Gay. I picked him up, I think, in the offseason for relatively cheap. So I'm, I'm happy he worked out pretty well. Kickers, Lions, Megan, Four Bath did all right. Weekly awards just to see which one of the users win it. I'm just going to skip it till I see a Colt, Andrew Luck, and then Griffin, my right in. Skip week three, week four, week five. Andrew Luck wins it again. Week 10, 49ers quarterback. There you go. Tolliver wins at week 11. Then Gaithier is right in. That's who it was. A right in. And the Colts free safety 
win it in week 12. Week 13, Andrew Luck. Week 14, Austin. And then we have Kendricks at the linebacker position. He finally came back, did some work. And then week 20, Austin in their playoff game. And then week 21, we have McCoy and Buchanan. Many of LaShawn McCoy and Austin run the ball. Golly. I'm just going to take a peek through the team stats. Colts had a pretty good season, man. Total offense, second place with a total yards gain of 8,830. I wonder if that wins it, but second place in total offense behind the Packers. Uh, threw the ball really well, ran the ball 2,500, threw the ball for almost 4,500. Averaged about 35 points a game, 35 and 35, pretty even. Wasn't super lopsided. We were a little further down the list, <laughs> as you can see by the scroll bar, probably towards the bottom. Well, we only had 5,600 with th about 3,700 on through the air and almost 2,000 on the ground. Averaged about 25 points a game. Pretty even again, but we just didn't put up the numbers. And the 49ers put up the least amount at almost 5,000 yards, 30, almost 37 through the air, about 1,300 on the ground, averaged about 19, 19 points per game, 22 and 15. I did want to see um, Colts beat <laughs> the 49ers beat the Broncos for total yards, and then Colts led the nation in total yards. Defensively, I was right there with the Colts. We just didn't put up the numbers offensively. Just a lot of long games, man. We were just like, what was that? 32 yards different like that's it but they gave up 4,000 passing yards and about 1,500 rushing yards and only 338 points see it was like a 32 yard difference but like a 64 <laughs> 63 yard or point difference man we just couldn't stop him dude that's for dang sure as uh he had another good season 22 interceptions eight fumbles 52 sacks where we had 47 sacks two fumbles and 14 interceptions 49ers allowed a 6,327 yards, about 4,300 through the air and over 2,000 on the ground. Gave up 551 points. Had 34 sacks, 16 fumbles. Man, forced a lot of fumbles, though, and 11 interceptions. Who allowed the most points? The fewest was the Panthers, followed by the Colts. The most was the 49ers. As far as conversion rating, Colts, 55%. That's pretty solid with the 68% and 80% in the two-point conversion. That's not bad. We were 53% with 56% on fourth down and 50% for the two-point conversion. And 49ers, this is where it killed them. They could not convert a third down and save their life, man. 39%. Yeah, Lee, dude. And 40% on fourth down. Fairly decent at the two-point conversion. Just couldn't convert a third down. Red zone efficiency. We were tied for first. <laughs> we were tied for first with three other teams with 80%. We scored 80% of the time we were in the red zone. Very good stat. Settled for a lot of field goals, though, but that's that's pretty solid. We only allowed them to score 76% of the time in the red zone, which is probably not great. We'll look at we'll sort that here in just a second. 49ers had a better red zone percentage than the Colts did. Colts didn't need it. They had a lot of big play ability. But, I mean, the 49ers only got there 38 times, too. You know what I mean? They just weren't able to produce whenever they got there and allowed 65%. That, that's a pretty solid defensive rating, man. And then the Colts at 67% and allowing 70%. Looking at the best in the nation, 49ers up there pretty good, man. They had a pretty solid defense, whereas the Colts at 70%, and we were probably more towards the bottom. Yeah, we allowed 76%, so we, we didn't have a good defensive year. And penalties, just because I'm curious to see where we set as uh, as it's sim simulating, because typically when you play the game, you don't get a whole lot. But we had 101 with 888 yards, 49ers 98 with 891 and then the Colts with 113 for 978, man. Oh, my gosh. Turnover difference. The Colts about middle of the road, maybe a little less at five. They turned the ball over 25 times, 17 interceptions, eight fumbles lost. But took the ball away 30 times with 22 interceptions and eight fumble recoveries. Whereas the 49ers at negative eight, myself at negative 10. <laughs> yeah, 49ers gave the ball away 35 times, 25 interceptions, 10 fumbles. But took the ball away 27 times, 11 interceptions, and 16 fumbles. They probably led the nation in fumble recoveries, where three isn't more negative 10, 26 giveaways through the interception, 25 times, 21 times, and five fumbles, but only got 16 takeaways on our end, 14 interceptions, and two fumble recoveries. Just because I'm curious to see who all retired. Hayes, Jordy Nelson, I lost a defensive tackle who I picked up for one year, so not a big deal there. Saints lost a couple of linebackers. Drew Brees is finally gone. Decided to hang up his his cleats and call it a, a year, and he is done. 49ers lost Peterson, which is probably fine. Dude was hurt a lot in a defensive tackle. 
Carson Palmer finally retires. Jake Cutler also retires. And that's it. A lot of punters, but not a super a lot of big name players. Just quite a bit. I mean, a lot of people that weren't even signed also retired. But uh, it's nice to see some of those older guys leaving so some of the younger guys can start making names for themselves as well. And all in all, a pretty good season. I need to re-sign players, but I have no money. So that's not going to work. <laughs> Financial probation warning. I, I need to not have that happen next season. If I do, I will be fired. So whatever it takes, if I can't sign anybody, that's just the way it is. I would love to maybe get rid of some of these guys and trade them away if possible. But Kendricks is going to be a huge one we miss out on. Same thing with the right end. Just a lot of potential that we're just not going to be able to do anything with. Man, we can't afford to sign anybody. Like, that's just the way it works. We're going to lose our backup quarterback, our backup safety. I mean, we're going to lose our, our award winner, <laughs> our almost award winner, corner. We lost two corners in middle linebacker. A lot of defense is what we're losing. We signed some big-name players. We just need to watch our money better next year. But all in all, solid year, man, solid season. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you guys are new, be sure to subscribe. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. My name is Little Chef, and I will see you all next time.